So I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to tell you about these two amazing little bioresonance devices that you can have access to in your own home, the Biophotonic and the Bionexus. Now, I think most of us realise that in today's day and age, it's absolutely impossible for us to avoid artificial environmental factors from EMFs, air pollution, toxic substances in our food and water. And so many people are suffering with so many conditions from anxiety, skin conditions, stress disorders, sleep disorders, lack of energy, brain fog, migraines, bloating, depression, all aspects of health that can be caused by our electrical field and the toxins being bombarded into us. So these are two different bioresonance devices, the Bionexus, the little one, and the Biophotonic, both small enough to fit in the parts of your hands. Um, both of them are completely standalone in the market in that they don't need a Bluetooth connection, they don't need a Wi-Fi connection, there's no packages to purchase, they're not controlled for mobile phones, they're completely standalone, ready to use out of the box. And that's so, so important because most people really understand how detrimental the impacts of mobile and Bluetooth radiation is. So you certainly don't want your bioresonance devices interacting with those. They are different. Um, the Bionexus and the Biophotonic, you can go to my website, the link will be below to find out the difference and how they might fit you. Um, but these are a complete game changer as far as I'm concerned for yourself and your animals. So I hope you love them as much as I do. Thank you. Right, we are back for our weekly coffee chat. Um, I'm here with Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta. I almost always forget to press the record button. And today we are going to be talking about why we forget as humans or why are we encouraged to forget as humans certain things? But before we dive delve in, dive deep into our topic, Bryce, how are you doing? I am really, really, really good. I feel a little tongue tied this morning. I can't go into too much detail, but hopefully soon I can. But justice is being served. The wheels of justice do, do turn very slowly, but it's a good day. It's a good day. I'll. I know people are going to be mad that I just hinted at something, but. I'll go into it further down the road once I can, you guys. But it's a good day. How are you, Catherine? I'm really good. There's um, I've had some really interesting discussions. This morning I was speaking to Ollie Damgard, um, who is like the Mr. False Flag in terms of what's going on, what to look out for. And that will be going up on Rumble shortly, either today or tomorrow, as soon as I can get it processed. And it was a fantastic conversation. And I've had quite a few brilliant conversations recently, and it's it really restores your faith in human character when you speak to certain people. You know, another one I would say is John O'Looney, the funeral director that's been whistleblowing. There's some real good eggs out there. And in terms of people that have been fighting these battles for a long while, you know, Oli Damagar has been doing this work for 40 years um, at huge personal risk to himself. Um, I actually spoke to Gareth Ike, was it yesterday or the day before as well, oh, which wow. was amazing. And, and you know, it, you think, come on, guys, we've got to have the resilience and we've got to keep asking probing questions. And you and I have had loads of discussions recently, Bryce, about how triggering it is for people to to have an idea that they don't agree with. And we see this so much in in the media, in alternative media, in social media, where you can have some really good points being made, but if someone disagrees with one bit of the argument, they poo-poo the old thing. And the reason I wanted to talk about why we forget today, I'm just going to get it up on my phone. We, I had a really brilliant, um, listened to a really brilliant interview. And again, when I'm saying really brilliant, please don't confuse that with me thinking that I agree with everything. But it was the Institute, I'll put the link below, Institute of Public Affairs Australia, and it was basically with Brendan O'Neill, and he is sort of a very outspoken sort of journalist from the UK that was really talking about this whole issue of how there's a whole field of psychology about making people forget. And you and I have had interviews with Cathy O'Brien. I'm saying lots of words here today, so <laughs> wish me luck, everyone. But, you know, um, 
brainwashing, mass formation, psychosis, psychology to be really careful, get people into a fear state and then forget it soon afterwards. It's a real thing. And look how much people have forgotten about the absolute atrocities that police and governments and members of the public inflicted on other people during COVID. And it's all rushed down to the carpet as if we we yeah. shouldn't do anything. But look look back in history, whatever really happened in history, and if we're not going to learn the lessons, we already know they're talking about a bird flu pandemic, which oh, might absolutely. be a bit yeah. spread by cars. Do you not think it's going to happen again? So I really want to have this discussion with you, Bryce, about this is so important. There's certain things that we don't forget and why it's so encouraged that we do. Well, it's, you know, and that, and for a, a larger scale, I think we've, I've been talking about, I just wrapped up the Romanoffs and I have been massively affected personally by the repeated nature of what was happening back in the, basically a hundred years ago, round, round it to a hundred years where, where the same stuff was happening, the exact same stuff along with like when, um, Tsar Nicholas II married Alexandra in the end of the late 1890s. They offered, there was this conspiracy around that if you got a, com a commemorative, a particular commemorative mug, they've been doing that, that stuff for a long time, you were going to get a free house. You know, even down to like the truther side of things, it's all been done before. But, you know, and that's why, you know, I always laugh that history is literally just academic gossip. It's you're just gossiping about people. That's all history is. But on the serious side, we, we're supposed to study history so we can see patterns and realize what doesn't work. And the fact that even on the, the larger scale that the Bolshevik revolution and the fall of the Romanovs, we know that was a terrible thing that happened. Like, and again, two things can be true. The Romanovs weren't that great, but the Bolsheviks are also weren't that great. Look what happened to Russia. Russia's still recovering from, from the USSR, but yet here we are, we're still, we're falling for it again. We're falling for it again. And you're right. It's like, what makes us? And part of me is like, is it this need? You know, my teacher, David Grieg, used to call, we would have this, like, um, he would call it the artful dodger. Mm. Where when something is uncomfortable, we subconsciously will shift away from it. Whether that's physical discomfort in the body or emotional discomfort. And so is the reality of what we're facing so uncomfortable that people choose to forget in order to go into like a dilute, like a mass delusion over in order to feel comfortable? Is that what's going on? I, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I, I think mean, you're right. a really good point. I think I, for me, it's both Coco's just about to knock all my stuff off. <laughs> Um, I think it, it can be a couple of things. So when we speak to trauma survivors and people like Kathy O'Brien, we know that you can compartmentalise the mind through trauma. We know that happens, don't we, Coco? Yes, she <laughs> agrees. Um, and we know this is a big tactic of in terms of how people can be mind controlled at all sorts of different levels. You've got extreme examples like that, and you've got less extreme that we're all subjected to through the film industry, through the music industry, through the media, through social media now. But you've also got the shame aspect of it. And a lot of people conveniently correct, uh, forget when they're ashamed of their behaviour. So, you know, someone could compose, there's a lot of videos going around on X at the moment where of it's coming out big time in the UK, um, AstraZeneca has been pulled from the market because of the damage. And they're saying it's very rare and everyone's like, this isn't rare and it's not just that one. So in one respect, it's interesting that it's coming out. But they've I've seen the most brilliant clips of doctors, real doctors, celebrity doctors on TV in all our countries, not just the UK politicians prominent members of television and everything coming out and literally saying the most horrific things about how they won't go they don't want to associate and anyone who's unvaxxed should be not allowed in the out should be quite you right. know if you I, yeah. yes you can have your choice but you're not going to be part of the society and if you have a heart attack that you um you you've got no entitlement to go to hospital i mean it's absolutely horrific spoiler alert we're not the ones having the heart attacks exactly Sorry. but in all seriousness and i don't mean to laugh about something so awful but the thing is it's these horrendous abuse things that have been said 
and not a single apology, not a single accountability. I mean, we've all, I've been subject to it on a personal level by people, and I'm sure everyone watching this has. And the the fact of the matter is, is that people will shut down the fact that they fell for these awful things. When they've been fooled, there's no accountability. And if you don't register it and make yourself accountable for it, it's not about blaming people. It's about not falling for the same trick again. And if you don't acknowledge it, you're not going to avoid it next time either. And society doesn't change. It goes deeper and deeper into the hole. And that's that artful dodger, right? To realize that you were on the wrong side of history. That's, as you're saying, that's shameful. And so you're going to try to pretend like it didn't happen because it's an uncomfortable. I was just having this conversation with my friend Cindy at Sacred Garden Yoga, where I teach twice a week. And both Cindy and my boyfriend kept their shalas open throughout the whole yeah. 2020. And both of those businesses took a lot of abuse from mm -hmm. other yoga shalas that we were staying open. And neither one of us uh, forced this, neither one of us forced the, the passports, nothing like that. And I was, my friend Cindy was like, you know, I, I remember the way people treated us. <laughs> so funny. You've got a lot of cats and children. Never worked well, with them. Well, animals remember, as you were saying that, I was thinking like animals actually remember things. Like Robbie won't go down certain roads if something, like if he scratched his paw, like he yeah. has... He, when he was a puppy, because we live in a city, he got his paw stuck in a, a grate once on the, on the city. Yeah. When he was little, Todd had to pull it out. And even though his paws are too big now to get stuck on grates, he won't walk on grates. Yeah. He avoids them. So it's like, he remember, whereas a human might be ashamed of the fact that they got their hand stuck in a grate and try to pretend like it didn't happen. Animals like remember, but maybe it's because humans, maybe because we have complex thought. I, I don't, I don't, maybe because we, I don't think animals actually feel shame. I think they they feel emotions and they deal with them and they move on. But maybe it's because we have that complex of thought or that ego of that, you know, and you're right. Like the horrific abuse that, I mean, I had somebody in the Ashtanga world try to get my authorization taken away from me because I was not forcing the Japanese doo mm. It didn't happen. It didn't work, but that, and that's like fascism to me like that. And now to see that, Oh, maybe the people, that we called crazy were actually right seeing that so many people who got it are sick um to have to admit that when you went so hard absolutely. and tried to ruin people's lives absolutely and 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 it ties into the language manipulation you know there's certain words we're not allowed to say luckily in the uk they've just reversed the fact because you weren't allowed to say breastfeeding women it had to be breastfeeding person and now they've said no sod that we're not doing it I think it's, it's the same in a lot of parts of America so yeah. the thing is this language manipulation there's deliberate things that you that people make uh, that were made to forget so there's a very f serious um very famous murder case of Myra Hindley and Ian Huntley who killed six children um in the 60s and everyone knows their name here but no one knows the name of the Manchester bomber and there could be complex reasons for that, because it could partly be because of the false flag events. And by the way, I cover this in detail in my interview with Ollie Damagard. False flag does not mean that no one was killed. So a right. mistake that people think that false flag means that it's all actors and no one's killed. No, 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 no. It means it's a psychological uh, manipulation. So the people doing the event are actually the ones who are supposedly the victims and so in this sort of case if it's a bombing it would be the government to as using that to put in new terror rules new controls new surveillance new tracking etc a good example of that would be what happened in september 2001 exactly you know what a perfect way to get us all scanned and with the awful scanners at the airports and no liquids and travel restrictions and everything so i think there's so many, it's very, very complex, but I think it's really important that when we look at what's going on, if we take some of the big terror attacks, for example, look even at Lahaina. I mean, how many people are still talking about Lahaina? Not oh, no one. It's done. It's the next it's, news story. It's on to the next one now. But there's a deliberate reason for this, because my understanding, and I could be wrong, I really can't wait to hear what other suggestions people have got in the comments, is that there's this whole agenda to keep us in fear. Because you keep us in fear, keep our nervous system on edge, our cortisol levels up here, because you do not make good decisions 
when you're in a fear state it puts a lot of stress on your body and if you're sick unhealthy and scared you're very controllable but then equally they don't want people remembering a lot of the key details they'll deliberately move on and move on and move on or compartmentalize that into terms of too difficult too horrific to deal with because if people did remember they'd start diving deep and they yeah. start asking questions that they don't want answers look at the police brutality that happened in australia in, in all areas of all countries in certain areas of the lockdown how can no one be prosecuted for that how you know let's not go back to those difficult questions because actually now things have calmed down the next calm before the storm that we know is coming if people are start if they start remembering asking too many questions then they're much less likely to fall for it the next time could be one scenario well, I think too, as you're saying that, I'm like, you know, because one thing the human brain is supposed to be able to do is recognize patterning, right? That's how we, that's part of the, the main function of the brain at, at, the, at the base level is to see patterns in order for us to stay alive. And as you're saying that, you know, I keep thinking about the fact that we have 24 hour news programs now, mm. you know, and like when I was a kid, that wasn't the case. It was like the news came on at certain times of the day and that was that. But you think about, you know, the news is never on there. They're not, never on there being like, you know, this great couple celebrated their 20th wedding anniversary and saved a puppy on that. It's never good news, right? It's always because fear sells. And so you know, if you take even take conspiracy out of it, they're always going to be dramatizing even more uh, a, an event that happened that's that's not that's that, that's not savory, and yeah. and that but we have it on a repeat cycle now for twenty four hours a day, and so I think I think what they're doing is that they are because you know my boyfriend always says this you know they have done studies this nefarious group of people have done studies on the human brain that we're not even aware of. Like they know how the human brain works better than we do. And so and they're using it to try to steer us and, and direct us. And I, I think they're probably that whole 24 hour news cycle thing is a way to keep us so stimulated that the brain goes more into like a freeze response and stops noticing so many patterns. Cause you're right. If they, if they let things simmer and just let it, let it be, I think more and more and more people would realize something's not right I just sense. no it, and I think it's really important for each of us to sort of look and sort of go back and sort of say you know what significant events am I not willing to look at am I you know we know this is a uh full a, a part of inner work is to look at those and it doesn't mean you have to relive them I think this is a difference it doesn't mean that you have to go and relive trauma what it means is sort of not forgetting the lessons learned because we know that's a part of growing up. You know, children touch the hot plate once and they don't do it again, hopefully. Um, you know, so that's part of our learning experience of how we learn as human beings and how most animals learn. But equally, it's very interesting to see why we're being misled in this way so much and why certain things are just taboo. And obviously with the censorship, deliberately whole parts of history we know and and by even recent history are just being written out um and i think it's really really fascinating to see that the agenda of this and not let it happen i mean anyone who uses google as a search engine you know it changes daily what you can find i was doing some work with a natural doctor with a holistic doctor and we were looking at a particular um uh, area of health where there were scientific papers showing how much if you activated this particular peptide in the body it called it so it sorted out all sorts of diseases and the, the scientific papers that were available on the search engine two years ago are no longer there they've been taken out because now people have got access to the natural solutions that do this people do not want you know those controllers do not want us knowing how to keep ourselves healthy um you know it it it's not keeping up with it. Anyone who knows anything about farmed fish knows that farmed fish are the most polluted foods you can eat on the planet virtually, but you won't find yeah. that in many search engines. And yet, why is it not keeping up to date? Why have we not been given real information? Well, it's like the HES Act. That, that is something that actually happened to me, kind of like you. I was 
when I was doing, actually, I was doing work on the Agartha story years back. It's on my channel still about hollow earth. And of course that, that made me um, stumble upon um, what are people saying on YouTube now? The Yahtzees, we'll say the Yahtzees, like the game Yahtzee. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. And I found the Hess Act and I, and I, and I read through it and I was like, holy shit, like this is where um, Schmittler, we'll say, Schmittler made a deal with the Pope to start a propaganda campaign that divination tools were demonic so that the mass majority of people would be dumbed down mm. so that they, Schmittler and his Yahtzees, could use divination and get a jump ahead of the rest of the world. And I started talking more and more about that. Like, if you're believing that divination tools by themselves are demonic, you're you're basically falling for, for Yahtzee pop propaganda. Well, our friend Emmy went and saved. I had included a bunch of websites where I found this information, and she had gone and saved all my websites. She had looked through them, saw them, and then saved them. And then a few months later, she went to click it, and it was 404 not found. Yeah. The website had been cleared. So it's with everything everything somebody discovers something they put it out there and then all of a sudden the powers that be pull it so that we we look crazy and we we look like you know we don't you know that, that there there's there's that, that that our research there that the, the narrative should be the official story it's it's and i think too catherine i think taking accountability it's scary it's scary for people yeah. to have to like face their that's that's why it's called shadow work it's hard you know it's so much your easier it's going right your your mic there's a lot of feedback there's something really weird happening with your mic there it's right back up can you hear me it sounds it like sounds some batteries, batteries. It. we're getting well, the feedback. Let me unplug. is it better now can you hear it yeah it better? okay i'll just leave it unplugged so sorry guys that the volume changes a little bit but Probably because the powers that be are watching us. <laughs> the, the Yahtzees and the Schmittlers are, are watching us. So, well, you know, it's, um, we, we look at the last competition, we'll say. I mean, the winner of the last competition that starts with the team, the B team, won by the most popular boats ever. More than Team O. I'm trying to be careful because of, you know, the big brother watching us like most people saw this and were like that's that that can't be the case but then we get distracted by somebody else or we think somebody else is going to fix it for us yeah literally we have to take accountability and and um you know hopefully with this next competition if something goes awry hopefully we'll actually do something at that point because obviously no one did it for us for the you know no one came in and saved the day for the last time mm. so you know, but it's scary. It's scary. You know, I can understand why people, even in the awake community or the disclosure community that we're in, want to believe that there's a secret agenda where someone's coming to save us. I can understand why people want to believe that. Oh, completely. And and most people, they're so busy with work, with family, just doing their daily thing. It's very hard to actually take the time to do this. I mean, we all know now that it's really important if you find good information to download it. But it's having time to do all these things, isn't it? We all know we should be growing our own food. We all know we should be, you know, supporting our local farmers. There's, it's this deliberate agenda, again, to keep everyone so busy that they haven't got time to do the things that they should be doing. Um, but I think the language manipulation is a really fascinating one to look at it because I, as an experiment, I asked ChatGTP before this, and I said, um, give me some facts. I can't remember the exact search person name. It was basically, give me some facts that we now know about lockdown that weren't true. And it was absolutely hysterical, the results. It was all like, well, some people didn't respect the mask mandate and some people didn't respect the social distancing. And this shows how irresponsible. I mean, it's hysterical. Play about with some of the stuff in there, guys. It's absolutely hysterical. Still defending like, the abusers. It's, it's still it's yeah so much it's gaslighting yeah completely and and um the problem is is that you know you and I have looked back into Tartaria we've looked back into all sorts of things so have many many people and the thing is we see how easy it is for them to scrub out history you can change yeah and alter photos you can delete them you can change writings and this is why the good old physical books are so so important and and don't buy the books off amazon normally because 
the problem is I know several authors that have had their books changed, self-publishing ones, off Amazon and not by them. This is one of the best purchases I ever made. This is a textbook. I don't know if I've even ever shown you this, Catherine. It's the history of the United States um, grammar school. So for like elementary school, this was published in the 1800s. Brilliant. I got it at an antique shop. I couldn't even read it. And see, the pages are almost falling apart. I couldn't even read it until I bought it because it was sealed. But it was only like $20. And it says here, right at the very beginning, it says that the Native Americans were all races. How many of us were taught that there were white Native Americans? There were black. I know a lot of people in America were like, well, the Creek Indians were literally black. Like, you see pictures of them, you know? But they were white. And they talk. So that that leans more towards Tartaria. Yeah. And this is a this is a literal. So go to antique. That's my advice. Go to, if you go to an antique shop or a flea market, go look in their book section because you can yeah. find school books. I would be interesting to interested to see science textbooks from like the eighteen hundreds. Be really interesting. That'd be very fascinating to see. You know, this is this is a grammar school. First of all, it's a grammar school book, but you read it. And I don't even know if teenagers, high school students, could actually read this book now because that shows you how much more literate people were kids were like grammar school would be elementary that's like kindergarten through fifth grade so what like five years old to 11 years old were the kids that were using this textbook wow it's fascinating it is fascinating and, and it's not like i said it's not like it's this was 20 dollars. it's not like it's expensive to really get these books and hold on to them like hold on i actually Catherine, i just found out that my grandmother's family the bennett's who had we've done a deep dive on my channel about them they were really prominent in South Georgia. They brought electricity to South Georgia. I found out that Valdosta State, which is a university down in South Georgia, one of my great great aunts donated a bunch of like diaries, journals from that family to the. I'm trying to get those back. I'm kind of pissed that they did that because who knows? This is a state university. What they're going to do with these journals from like the 18, 1700s, like information could be in those journals just by somebody writing about their day that they don't want to get out. Did I tell you, Catherine, I don't even know if I told you this. Um, so my boyfriend, Catherine knows my boyfriend, he's really into hiking mm. and he likes to go off the off trail. So he got access to the archaeological department at the University of Georgia, which is in Athens, about 90 miles from us. And he usually have to pay for it, but he had an in. So he was going to look at old maps from like the 1800s of Georgia to find old logging roads. Because those usually make some pretty good trails where nobody, nobody is on them. And he pulled the map up and he was in the other room and I heard him scream for me. Like, get in here. get. I felt like I was in trouble. I'm like, get in here. And he was like, he pulled on the big laptop or big desktop. He was like, what do you see? What do you see on this map? It was from the 1800s from the University of Georgia's ar archives. Across Georgia, it said... Egypt instead of the state named Georgia and it was Georgia you could tell the, the markings of it said Egypt why did it say Egypt on a map from the 1800s of Georgia a logging road map and I guarantee you now that I've said that University of Georgia probably well, we got a copy of it now but I'll bet a bet universities are going to start pulling these maps yeah these, because that's a question why did it say why does that map say Egypt why they, they using the official narrative they can't answer those questions can they they can't tell us why if they use the official narrative why why people from the 1800s would have that written on a map yeah so, I think it's fantastic i think you know there's so many people looking now but the important thing is we do have to save this information we have to download it when we can copy and paste save it yeah save it get real books from trusted sources and really have a look at it because I think, you know, this this amnesia that we're all being put into, there's never a positive. Yes, it's a survival instinct because otherwise after certain traumas. So there can be a positive thing from that. But when it's being done by nefarious sources that we know the end agenda is not in our best interest and to get rid of most of us. <laughs> then, we have to stay vigilant. <laughs> you do need to stay vigilant and you need to keep asking questions and keep reminding people. And it, isn't it interesting is it's never, I'm only just using the pandemic. I won't say the C word any more times on one video. But, um, you know, if you look at the pandemic, it's never the people who fell for the pandemic that are still going on and sort of saying, look, what about this? Look what they did to us. And it's not look what they did to us in terms of, sorry, it's look what I did to us that we 
was this close to being brutalized by our own police forces and our own controllers and lied to by the statistics and the governments and the you know prominent health officials and doctors standing there on television saying complete untruths that they'd just been puppet fed to say i mean no one no no one can say about any pharmaceutical product any that it's 100 percent safe and effective you know and i saw someone i saw something very fascinating yesterday i thought that's a really good point somebody says if you have side effects that means your body was poisoned Yes, absolutely. Period. Story. Your body was poisoned. That's and why I was... every pharmaceutical product, sorry to interrupt, but has something called a lethal dose fifty, and that's why a lot of the na- the natural products can't be make medical claims because there is no lethal dose fifty because it doesn't poison your body in the process of doing it. And if you look into that, it's really fascinating. Now, some herbs can, you know, some herbs you can have far too much for a good thing, but there are also some other natural products. That like Bryce and I use in the back. Yeah, I was thinking the idea. Yeah, why they are not allowed to make any of these claims, even though they do dramatic things, because you could ju- you cannot kill yourself by drinking this stuff. But but every single pharmaceutical product has a lethal dose fifty, which is how much of it you need to take before it kills fifty percent of the mice or lab rats or whatever they're testing on. Because it's you, but if you're taking it long term, you're just slowly poisoning yourself rather than doing it all in one foul swoop. Absolutely. And you know, it's as you were saying that too, Catherine, I was thinking about this idea of motivation versus discipline. And I think what happens too, like, especially when it comes to like food, you know, especially we look at everything, like I'm, I'm in my 40s. So I look at like women in my age group, you've got children who have homework, who have sports they have to get to. You're probably working full time. Yes, it's so much easier just to put a frozen pizza in the oven or to yeah. go buy McDonald's. It takes it takes a lot of work to change the patterning on, on how you eat food. And there's this whole thing about motivation and versus discipline. When you first learn about everything, I, I find a lot of people are very motivated to mm-hmm. start changing, cleaning out their pantry, start to really make an effort to eat more organically. But over time, the motivation goes away and the old patterning set back in. And that's when discipline has to take over. And there's also this idea of like pattern changing as well. So we, everything we do in our lives is a particular pattern. Like the time we get up, go to, it's all, it's all scheduled in pattern. And it takes, what is it to break a habit or start a new habit? It takes like a month of consistency yeah. doing it daily of breaking so that, and I would ask people like, if you are trying like, and this goes the same thing for exercise. How many people get motivated to go for a run and then the motivation wears off and laziness kicks back in again. When that motivation ends, I would I would beg you just to keep going with it. Just get up and do do the discipline. Like go and plant the garden. Get up earlier to pull. If, and over about about a month, that new pattern will start to set in, so that it feels more natural for you to have the organic food versus the McDonald's. But you have to break through. And I think what happens is we get so bogged down with our life that once motivation goes away. It's just easier. The artful dodger kicks in. It's easier to go back to the old patterns for time management or whatever, which I think is done very intentionally, of course. So I would just ask you guys to push through that hard part, switching between motivation and discipline so that those new patterns can emerge. Because once those new patterns emerge, it will become easier to stay on a different path, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, this is why people like Andrew Tate, they hate so much because that's exactly what he teaches. And again, you don't have to like every bit of the message to not realise that there's some really good core principles there. Because if you've got good discipline and if you've got good discernment and understanding about what's going on, then you're going to make so much better decisions for you and your loved ones. And also you're going to be so much less open to manipulation. Of course, we are all open to manipulation, but you're going to be less so. Um, So it's an important subject. And I think we can see things ramping up again in all areas of the world. Um, You know, there was, I'm trying to think, uh, which company well, one of the prime ministers in one of the countries in Europe has just been um looked to be assassinated and there were videos last week just because he was standing up against NATO and a lot of the things and everyone was like well they're going to be the next target what happens the next week 
a uh, Slovenia, I think it is, a Slovenian um, prime minister. So they're ramping up again. Um, I think the competition really is very vigilant. We sort of keep it in people's mindset. And, you know, it's a bit like no one who didn't take this regrets not taking it. And it's not about shaming anyone who's made a decision they was hurt. It's just like, well, let's not be fooled again the next time. Let's make let's make sure we don't get this amnesia this time for these things about how they manage to achieve it. Because all they do is each time is build on it, build on it, build on it. What worked well last time? Let's do more of that. Absolutely. And I will say for, if anybody that did get this and they realized they made a mistake, there are things you, your body's resilient, your yeah. body can itself. And so if you get with a good nutritionist or like a Catherine, if you take her courses, figure out food, you, you you can give your body the read. That's the good news. You can There's give your so body. You can do. Yeah. To counter that. Cause your body is, you have an immune system for a reason. Your body is once your body is constantly working constantly to rebalance itself. And so if you give your body that support, I, you'll be fine. Like in my opinion, you'll, you'll be I fine. Agree. So it's yeah. the body's amazing. It's not doom and gloom, but yeah, it's, it's just, uh, you just, I mean, we're in a war right now. You gotta, you gotta like realize, you know, and, and, and it's tough, it's tough, but obviously we can do it or we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing it. You know, we wouldn't be trying every day to, to make the best decisions. And um, I just encourage everybody just to take your power. You just every day motivate, not motivate, discipline yourself, discipline yourself to take your power back. You know, Catherine, it's like, I, I was saying one of my, the most things that annoys me the most is when people here, I get up so early in the morning to, to exercise basically. And they're like, Oh, I'm not a morning person. And that annoys me. Cause I want to be like, you think I am, you think I am a morning, no, I'm disciplined. And I will say it's, it's with that, you know, even with exercise, like I'm six days of the week, I exercise five days. I don't want to do it, but I do it anyway. Yeah. And to that point where I know if I missed that exercise, I would feel crappy for the rest of the day, even though I don't want to be doing it in the moment. And every curse word I know and every language is in my head in the moment, I still do it. And that's the true for everything. I'm sure like even food prepping for with more organic, Absolutely. it might be annoying in the moment because it takes more work, but you're do something today. Your future self will thank you for, you know, Absolutely. Completely. So let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know what you're noticing with people you're, you're interacting with. You know, are, are we being encouraged to forget things, not talk about things, mustn't mention it again, or don't rehash this again? I will put the link to the video I watched below because it's hysterical. It gives some really good examples of what happened in the UK, you know, of you know, you could walk in the park, but all the benches were taped off because you couldn't sit there and you could go to a wedding, but you couldn't dance at a wedding. And even one place in, I think it was Yorkshire or the Peak District or something, they actually dyed a lake black to stop people going in it. It's really happened. And then you, this is the whole story. I won't tell you too much more because watch the link below. But it is like, you know, everyone's like, no, 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 that didn't happen because it seems ridiculous. And it actually really did happen. Yeah, it really did happen. And, you know, however ridiculous it is, this is what happened. This is what they did to us. They will do it again if we don't remember and if we're not a little bit more alert next time. Yeah, 100%. Have a great day. So next week, we will be back on Esoteric Atlanta. So if you're not subscribed, um, please do check both our channels out below, hit the notification, hit the like. And please, please, please also go and check out our Rumble channels because we put a lot of information on there that we cannot put here. Um, so we would really appreciate it. And it's quite a good system there that, you know, once you do um, subscribe to a channel, you'll get good notifications yeah. through for that. So it's really worth it. I'm finding I'm putting more and more and more stuff over there, guys. So, yeah, yeah. I would, and I'll always notify you guys on YouTube, but I would just go ahead and subscribe to us on Rumble as well because you'll get notified. I get I get notifications. I get better notifications from Rumble than I do from YouTube. Oh, completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. So it's really worth it. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Take care. See you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.